being from Lebanon and, and also living in the Midwest kind of meant being guaranteed to be the odd one out. Uh, for instance, like growing up, I spent, you know, the summers um, in Lebanon and then I'd spend the school year in the States, which made it kind of hard to make friends. But that's obviously slowed down because of the turmoil right now in Lebanon. But you can kind of see that whole odd one out play out, especially in high school, because you, you could see that, you know, me and my friends were all kind of were the odd ones out. We became friends. So um, I think it's been a good thing. Um, I have closer friendships because of it. And I don't know, there's something unique to me that some other people don't have. What most interested me about tennis, I think, is the fact that it's an individual sport where you're kind of by yourself and face off against your opponent one on one. And anything that happens in the match is only your fault and no one else's, which I just kind of gravitated towards. And I'm definitely a competitive person. So it was one of those sports that I just enjoyed playing. Since coming to college, I have definitely learned more about myself than I have in previous years. Um, and I saw this definitely first when it comes to the social life in college. Um, in a way, you're kind of forced to be around people 24-7, uh, which has made me value and realize the importance that privacy and um, almost like alone time has played a part in my life. It's something I value now over almost anything else. There is this magical time of night after my daughter goes to sleep. I think every parent out there knows what I'm talking about. She is the most amazing little human. She's smart. Hilarious, loud, vibrant, and all over the place. She has so much energy. I'm hungry. She takes so much energy. But when she sleeps, Everything is quiet. And I'm finally able to focus all of my energy into just one thing at a time. Chores feel less like chores and more like meditation. The fog in my brain clears a little and I can think. For this short bit of time, I can be not mommy, just me. And in this moment of clarity, I can remember that she's not just the ultimate pusher of all my buttons. She is the light that brightens my whole world.
10 days. And I've spent 99% of it in a single room. A room with just a bed, a desk, and a window when I arrived. 10 days without a face-to-face conversation, without high fives, hugs, or handshakes. 10 days, no friends to give me a smile and a wave, nobody to tell me I should shave my hideous facial hair. 10 days with no bedtime, no reason to shower or put on socks. When I take out the trash, it excites me because it's something to do. 10 days, but it feels like 20 with my harshest critic. I don't remember day two any different than day four or six. They blend together into one solo experience. One long day, one same room. Five, five, five. But that's all it is. Ten days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can count that high when we're three years old. Ten days, 24 hours each. Each hour split into many moments. Most moments are just that. Brief and gone and will never be remembered. But who cares what we forgot? What I forgot. It's forgotten for a reason. For every 100 moments that pass by, maybe even a thousand, there might only be one moment that sticks. One moment that fills all the room in your head that those thousand never could. As time moves onward, 10 days is just one moment. How important? That's up to me. 6,783 days. I think I can throw away 10 of those. After all, taking out the trash excites me. So, here's to the next 10, 20, or 6,783. To their memories and stories. Here's to their moments, my moments, the best of which are yet to come. What used to be something we all do for fun has now become something we depend on for almost everything in our lives. Phones and other technologies have been a great way for us to take a break from the real world. But now, we rely on technology not only for play, but also school and work. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, schools and jobs have transitioned online. We are spending increasing amounts of time in front of screens. Now, based on the fact that we're doing most of our learning online, I'm pretty much on a screen 75 to 80% of my day. Combined with schoolwork and stuff, i say maybe like six to eight hours a day. Even with school and work being online, we still go to our typical outlet for relaxation and wasting time, our phones. Alongside social media, mobile gaming is a popular way to spend free time. I would say mobile games are nice necessities to have, just say if you don't have anything else to do, like a little distraction. I play a couple times a day. I like to use them as kind of like a time waster. It's fun to do every once in a while. I like mobile games. I play them a lot. Not only are mobile games fun, but people also play them to relieve stress and anxiety. Mobile gaming is kind of a stress reliever for me. Like if I'm trying to get my mind off of something super stressful, I will divert my brain with pretty colors and fantasy, I guess you could say it that way. I could definitely see them as stress relievers. While playing games on our phone can be a fun way to take a break, there's still a problem. We are looking at yet another screen. We go from one screen to the other with no break. And also, mobile games may not be as relaxing as we think. These games are created to capture our attention, trigger our senses, and get us addicted. By combining bright colors, visuals that constantly change, and exciting sounds, 
These games drag you in until you can't get away. Let's stop. I think it's time for us to take a break from screens. Maybe go outside and breathe in the fresh air, take in the scenery, and listen to the birds chirping in the distance. Now more than ever, it is important that we get outside and away from screens. Give yourself a break. Turn off. What are you doing, man? You can't finish this. You're gonna fail this test. Can you get anything right? You're going to fail all these finals, and you're gonna have to spend more money than if you just got your stuff together. This is all your you're fault. You're awful at this. What are you so bad at this? Say? Just give up. Really you just all with. Come on. You're gonna suck. fail this. Is anyone there?
not in the mood for any sweet I'm so sick of wasting my time I'm fed up with yelling you're not even selling lies play by the rules or drop dead I can't believe what you said oh please she's just a friend well friends don't leave lipstick on collars you little ooh. not gonna come home not gonna come home to you not gonna come home not gonna come home to you anymore how big a hole you gonna dig should never gotten dirty with a pig out buying the jewels of my dime oh boy you forget it i'll make you regret it all you committed the ultimate war crime now it's time for me to draw the line you haven't seen nothing yet but did you expect boy that i wouldn't give a ooh, ooh, ooh. not gonna come home not gonna come home to you not gonna come home not gonna come home to you anymore ba 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 da 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 do ba 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 da 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 do ba 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 da 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 do ba ba da do da 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 do ba 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 da 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 do ba 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 da 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 do ba 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 da 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 do ba 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 da do da 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 do
Good evening, my fellow Americans. First, I should like to express my gratitude to the radio and television networks for the opportunities they have given me over the years to bring reports and messages to our nation. My special thanks go to them for the opportunity of addressing you this evening. Three days from now, after half a century in the service of our country, I shall lay down the responsibilities of office as, in traditional and solemn ceremony, the authority of the presidency is vested in my successor. This evening, I come to you with a message of leave-taking and farewell, and to share a few final thoughts with you, my countrymen. Like every other citizen, I wish the new president and all who will labor with him Godspeed. I pray that the coming years will be blessed with peace and prosperity for all. Our people expect their president and the Congress to find essential agreement on issues of great moment, the wise resolution of which will better shape the future of the nation. A vital element in keeping the peace is our military establishment. Our arms must be mighty, ready for instant action so that no potential aggressor may be tempted to risk his own destruction. Our military organization today bears little relation to that known of any of my predecessors in peacetime, or indeed by the fighting men of World War II or Korea. Until the latest of our world conflicts, the United States had no armaments industry. American makers of plowshares could with time, and as required, make swords as well. But we can no longer risk emergency improvisation of national defense. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Added to this, three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. We annually spend on military security alone more than the net income of all United States corporations. Now, this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. The prospect of domination of the nation's scholars by federal employment, project allocations, and the power of money is ever present and is gravely to be regarded. It is the task of statesmanship to mold, to balance, and to integrate these and other forces, new and old, within the principles of our democratic system, ever aiming toward the supreme goals of our free society. Another factor in maintaining balance involves the element of time. As we peer into society's future, we, you and I, and our government, must avoid the impulse to live only for today, plundering for our own ease and convenience the precious resources of tomorrow. We cannot mortgage the material assets of our grandchildren without risking the loss also of their political and spiritual heritage. We want democracy to survive for all generations to come, not to become the insolvent phantom of tomorrow. During the long lane of the history yet to be written, America knows that this world of ours, ever growing smaller, must avoid becoming a community of dreadful fear and hate and be instead a proud confederation of mutual trust and respect. Such a confederation must be one of equals. The weakest must come to the conference table with the same competence as do we. 
protected as we are by our moral, economic, and military strength. That table, though scarred by many fast frustrations, past frustrations, cannot be abandoned for the certainty agony of the battlefield. Disarmament with mutual honor and confidence is a continuing imperative. Thank you, and good night. Moral decay is spreading through our country and our society. I am liberty. I am the living symbol of all women, creeds, and races, the persecuted and oppressed, the crushed in spirit. You want your son enticed into the world of homosexuals, or your daughter lured into lesbianism. Yeah. <laughs> And cover. And cover. You have a right to be what you are and say what you think because here we have personal freedom. We have liberty. And these are not just fancy words. This is a practical and priceless way of living. Ralph was sick. A sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual. Here in America, it's not a question whether we tolerate minorities. America is minorities. Homosexuals are not passive. Some resort to violence. One never knows when the homosexual is about. He may appear normal, and it may be too late when you discover he is mentally ill. We must seek to deliver ourselves from this twisting, torturing evil. We must save our nation from decay and deliver our children from the horrors of perversion. Can you point them out? In what manner do they differ from you or your neighbor? He is even enticed to enter the world of homosexuals, lesbians, sadists, masochists, and other sex deviants. Let's be selfish about it. Let's forget about we and they. Let's think about us. Perversion. Mentally ill. Liberty. Violence. Sickness. Decay. Or do they differ from you? Personal freedom. The trail ahead may not be always smooth, but at its end is a broad highway, a better way of life, not only for ourselves, but for all peoples everywhere.
Hi, Brian. Getting, you know, a hundred rolls of toilet paper, uh, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense.
Eastern Minnesota Visual Artists is what Simba stands for. And we are a co-op gallery and have been around for about 30 years. The gallery makeup of it is our artists. And so that's what makes us really different, that in order for us to be successful, our artists all have to be involved with it. And many of the artists that exhibit here are deeply involved in other occupations, ranging from MDs to uh, farmers, such as myself and my husband. It is self-supporting. We do not receive any public money. Uh, this is a nonprofit organization. And the number of artists that, that maybe, in a lot of cases, would have no, no other place to display our work on a regular basis. So it's, it's, it's been a real boon for us and for a lot of people, I think. All right, so back here is what we have is our office. And in our office, we have a lot of things for our artists. And it's kind of where we keep the nuts and bolts of things going on. So we have, we have files for all of our artists. And in here is where they get their paychecks and where we can put communications and things like that. We also have an area here where they can print out their uh, price tags and make their cards for pricing and all of that. And of course, I believe every gallery has to have coffee. And this is basically our storage. We can come and change out all of our panels and put on new and hooks and all of that kind of thing. So pretty much this is where they can come and just have everything that they need to be able to put their art up on the wall. Every artist that works in the community is kind of a partnership with the community because they bring their creative ideas and a way to express their artistic creativity in other ways. So I think the role that Simba plays in our community is that we are a gallery that is run by artists and we are local. So we serve many different counties around Minnesota. The idea that we can have a lot of differences and we can have a lot of uniqueness, but we're still in a lot of ways really connected with one another. We keep it with the artists. The artists get to choose what they want to put in and what they want to do and how they want to present it. And that makes us really unique to our, to Rochester. That uh, each artist has their own specialty Many of them work in a lot of different mediums. You can look at, at many different forms of artwork and you can say, wow, you know, I like that. That's really cool. I never thought of something like that. And I, I, that's what I think it brings to a community. We share techniques and most of all, we share our life stories, which is very important. And we do this all in the atmosphere of beautiful art in the gallery. Only a couple more doors. So in here is where we keep all of our supplies for like any, like any other store would have. We keep our wine and all of that ready for any of our holiday parties or when artists wanted to do, when they wanted to showcase their own art. And then over here, of course, we have bubble wrap and then we have all of our decorations and easels and extra things like that. So we try to have something around that the artists can use in case they wanna do a show upstairs or have people in, have those supplies for them. I joined Simba in 2018, so I'm probably one of their newer members uh, in relation to some of the people that have had a long history with the gallery. 
However, I did know about it. Uh, it was located not too far from one of my favorite stomping grounds, the Rochester Public Library. And so Rita and I had uh, decided we were gonna go in there and just check it out. And we went in and we were totally impressed. Came back to Rochester, I inquired about a place to my art. And they told me about Simba Art Gallery. So I went down there and I had several pieces of framed watercolor art and they were juried in and they accepted it. And I have become a member for 16 years. One day my daughter and I were downtown and we walked into Simba and the artists working there, um, we started talking and my daughter says, well, my mom makes jewelry, look at her bracelet. And I happened to be wearing one of the bracelets I made. And she goes, you should be juried in. I thought, this is just incredible. And we, we really wanted to be part of it. So we decided we were going to join the gallery. And uh, we were juried in. And uh, we've been here ever since. I look upon Semba as being just the start of a new adventure. So I went home and my daughter says, yeah, why don't you just take down some of your jewelry and see what they say. So I put some pieces together, I took some pictures, and about two or three late weeks later, they were having their board meeting. I was at home and I knew it was the day. I got a call from our gallery director at the time, and he told me that I was juried in. I was very excited, and I asked one of the artists to accompany me in putting up my art because I did, knew nothing about how to display it or anything like that. And they were always very willing. And so they helped me to get it all displayed. I literally could not believe that they had picked my jewelry to be in their gallery. And I absolutely could not believe that I was one of the 70 artists that was gonna be able to show in Simba Gallery. I could just feel the very acceptance of the artists in the gallery at that time. My husband was grocery shopping and I was literally shaking. I could not believe that this had happened. I hopped in my car, I drove to hy V. I I found him in the parking lot and I'm like, honey, can you believe that Simba let me in? They said yes. from Red Wing, Minnesota in 91. And they had a show there. Oh my gosh, these are all the old artists that used to be in the gallery. Oh, these are amazing. And then all our old artists, some of our old artists given a class. Oh my gosh, this was cool. They, when they first put together Simba, they would go around Rochester and and the surrounding area and put on shows and exhibits. And then um, they found the place down, down in the Peace Plaza and they opened up that and um, that was the first and only place they ever went besides the one we're in now, is the way I understand it. What is that? When they first opened. The camaraderie continues on here and for me Semba Art Gallery has been the way in which I in working with a group of other artists started to become engaged in 
community projects. Because of being in SEMVA, being able to direct people to this art gallery from different parts of the state, and we've been able to talk about art in, in a way that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. So I think SEMVA has really benefited both of us for, in a lot of ways. Being a member of SEMVA has just been a real joy for me, and it's been like a, a life-expanding experience for me. I have made many friends there, and in making a friend, we share ideas. To just see how much this gallery meant to so many of our artists and how excited they were to be able to open and to put our art somewhere, that, that is probably the biggest moment that I've had here, to be able to see this come from nothing to what we have now, that was just, that, that has been an incredible experience. And since belonging with Semba, I've been able to establish partnerships with one of the restaurants here in town, the Porch Restaurant, which is just down the street a little ways, and we're able to uh, try and advertise their business, and they in turn exhibited some of my artworks. So my bracelets make noise when you wear them. And one day I was putting them out and uh, somebody came in and was watching me and I said to her, I said, yeah, I'm putting out some new jewelry. You know, would you like to take a look at it? She goes, oh, that's kind of neat. And I said, well, it makes noise. I said, if you wear it, I said, this is one of the things about it. it when you wear it, it makes noise. And I said, it's just kind of soothing. She goes, well, well, where did you get that? Where did you get that idea? So I got to talk about collecting my beads and making noises and all that kind of, and I sold the piece. Now, did she buy it because she loved it? Maybe. Did she buy it because she liked me? Maybe. Did she buy it because it was an interesting story? Maybe, but all three of those things put together gave me a sale. So that kind of proved to me, well, they have to get to know me, they have to get to know my art, and they have to get to know my process because it's personal. Mm -hmm. They know me now. And she can go home and say, I met this artist, and, and here's the story. So th that's been a really interesting process about a learning process that I've had being here. Safe to work, okay? Text me when you get there. I always do.